uh, Martin Matouche. Um, I hope I'm getting the pronunciation right, Martin. Um, and so Martin's a lead product manager at Product Board, um, the product management system that helps uh, teams get their products to market incredibly fast with uh, five years of experience all over the board at PwC and uh, working with Product Board customers. Uh, he's done uh, an enormous amount of interesting things. And, um, and uh, yeah, so Martin's going to give us a, a talk. Um, I'm afraid there's no chance for Q&A, but if you put your questions anyway in the chat, um, Martin will probably be able to get back to you directly. And just one little tip, um, on, the, on the video embed on the YouTube stream, if you do want to go full screen, you can do so using the little sort of square YouTube button um, in the corner. So um, with that, Martin, over to you. All right, uh, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure to, to be here and to speak to all of you. Uh, I don't see how many of you are there since I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on Zoom here, but uh, thank you so much for joining. I'm Martin, uh, as was said, I'm a product manager, and this is a story of a story of a product manager, the uh, the superhero with all the right answers about what should we do next, uh, the man with the crystal ball, right, leading all the product teams from from one success to to another, or that's at least the picture that we like to paint sometimes. But uh, is that really the case? Um, Fortunately, precognition is not a superpower that I would have. Uh, at least I, I would want to. It's uh, it's one of my things on the list for the list for two. But I don't I don't have it, and I'm I'm I am I am super sure that my teams have worked on the proverbial wrong things in the past. And even at the moment, the the feeling of uncertainty when we are working on things, you know, and uh, we're wondering is this the right thing to to really be working on? Um, it's a feeling that product managers share, you know, at least according to all the product management studies that you can, you can find out there and the struggle is, is real. So it's no, no surprise that when it comes to talking about the upcoming uh, priorities and quarterly planning sessions and then these things, product managers tend to get a little bit nervous and that's, that's all right. Product prioritization is a chaotic and a, and a messy, messy process. It's all right to feel that way. And this is a story of one particular quarterly planning session that I would like to share with you. Uh, and I hope that uh, uh, the mistakes that I've witnessed and, and done and the, the lessons learned that, um, that, I, that I learned there is something that hits close to home and uh, especially the lessons learned is something that you can, uh, you can apply in your practice um, as well, hopefully. At Product board, we tend to look at the three months horizon when we do planning. So it's the, the usual uh, quarterly planning cycle. It just works for us. It's something that has proven to, to work in the past. We continue doing so. It's increasingly obvious that going into the future, we'll have to um, you know, build a longer visionary outlook. Uh, it's something that we are working on. But for the, for the sake of this talk, I'll focus on the quarterly, quarterly planning uh, lookout that we, uh, that we usually do. And uh, until the beginning of the Corona times, uh, this is something that we would do in a form of a workshop. We would be sitting together in an office in, in one meeting room, the product managers, designers, engineers, you know, talking to each other, discussing what's the best ratio between uh, building new stuff and tackling technical debts and all the other wonderful engineering priorities. And as you can imagine, for sure, this is a heated discussion. You need to be well prepared, like loads of emotions that go into this. Uh, it takes a lot of time. Uh, sometimes it even like feels endless, right? You 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 end one quarterly planning session, and then the next week you go straight in the uh, into the other one. Um, but it it worked. We got we got good plans, good results. We executed on them, and we we're, were successful. And then go with go with ninety. So let me take you let me take you back to March two twenty. Wonderful times. I, I know that it's not the uh, the best time uh, of of the year for for many of us. So bear with me. Uh, this will be just a couple of couple of minutes uh, reminiscing on the March 2020 topic. Um, but this this was something really new for us, right? For everybody, we had to start working from home from one day to another, and especially for us at at, at Product Board, this was this was something completely new. Um, we were a collocated setup, like we were working from. Uh, from one office, we're sitting next to each other. All the R&D teams or the product teams were working from the um, from the Prague office, and uh, uh, you know, just like from one day to another, everything was remote. So, so we had to we had to adapt, and uh, the, the situation was was pretty extreme. 
Uh, we didn't know what's going to happen with the company, with the economy, uh, with the country, or even with our personal lives. So this was something totally new, a brand new environment for the whole product team. Um, and uh, in this situation, the product organization was tasked with this quest, you know, come up with a great, uh, great way how to solve uh, the, uh, the upcoming challenges that we see in the COVID times, you know, come up with a great plan. Uh, so it's an, and as I, as I told you before, uh, product quarterly planning wasn't really a stroll in the park for us to begin with. So this was a an extreme situation and another extreme situation, uh, which was, uh, which was pretty, pretty intense. And this is what, and this is what I would like to talk to you about because the extreme situation really amplified the pain points and uh, the, the lessons learned that we, uh, that we actually were able to, to get from this. So as we, as we grew, let me take you uh, through a little bit of context here. As we grew, we really took pride in our ability to, to build a product organization around our main uh, user persona job to be done. So we had three tribes as we call them, and this really helped us build the sense of uh, domain ownership, code ownership, all that, all that good stuff. And over time, the structure became more and more solid. We had product managers, engineers, designers, all the product teams working in those tribes uh, and being the experts in there, you know, in the, in the domain and in the, in the code in the actual app and everything. And this works really well for the sense of, of ownership. And this was successful in the business as usual scenario. But, you know, during COVID times, this started to be a little bit uh, unwieldy. And uh, why, why is that? So, so we had an updated product strategy, right, for, for the COVID times. We had new challenges and we had new direction to, to take and new, uh, new experiments to, to conduct from the, from the high level. And it's proof that this existing product work structure is just, is just unable to, to come up with uh, the prioritization of these big bets. Uh, why, why is that, you, you may ask? Because they, uh, the tribes were usually focused on, on their area of, of the product or of product management that they wanted, they wanted to solve. And they were coming with objectives, proposals, and initiatives from, from their domain, but were just unable to prioritize across. And this was really frustrating for us as product managers because every single plan that we were able to come up with was heavily challenged by our leadership and rightly so. So we had to go back, redo it, present it again, get challenged, go back and repeat. So this process repeated lots of times. Uh, so so what, we, what we had to do at the end, in the end was that we, we had to take a few steps back and really focus on what matters, on the product vision and the trends of, in the user feedback that we saw. And one practical thing that really helped us do this was a straightforward gap analysis to really look at the user, uh, the job to be done across the org, across, uh, across the persona that we have, the product manager, break it down into smaller pieces and say, this is the gap that we see between the user need and the current solution and how important is it to us? What's the desire? Where do we want to take this over the next quarter, over the next year? And this, this, you know, this gave us a very, very simple overview of where should we invest and where should we allocate the, the product teams and forget about the existing structure. Just do it. Uh, what, what matters the most, focus on the big bets. So this is, this is the first thing, focus on what matters. Don't be afraid to break the, the org, be nimble. If you are in the growth stage, it's really important to, to leverage that. You, you can change things, don't be afraid to break stuff. Another big lesson for me that, that, that we learned and that I learned is that you can never scope down the number of initiatives enough. Um, part of our prioritization process was always to, um, to, always to estimate uh, we even had our shot with, you know, mandates and the, the time, time estimations. That, that's a different story that didn't go really well. But the normal process and the variant of it was that, you know, we would use something like t-shirt sizing and we would map the capacity via the existing team structure. And that it was kind of, kind of reasonable, kind of reasonable, perfect. Uh, there was always, uh, there were always mistakes, but that's kind of accepted. But uh, why didn't it work in March 2020? Um, as, I, as I mentioned, we had to shift the teams around. They, like the sense of the domain ownership uh, and the knowledge was, was gone. The, uh, the estimations of those teams were like completely off, even if they wanted to give us the estimates, it just didn't work. So what we had to do is that we had to, uh, we had to accept this, this imperfection. And the obvious thing to say is, all right, so we'll just scope a couple of things. Um, and this helps you in the, in the capacity aspect of it. But what helped more and what, what I find more important uh, is, 
is the ability to rally the teams around a smaller number of objectives, like the the alignment piece of it was really important and it uh, it helped us amplify that these are the core pieces that we need to put together to be successful in these times. Uh, not that we have these uh, minor objectives that we, yeah, eventually we'll have to do them as well. We have to, you know, achieve this, uh, but it's not, it's not what's important right now. So, so the second, the alignment aspect of this was really important for us to, to have. And if I say March 2020 planning, it's actually not the full story. You know, because we went into April and we were still planning and it's actually long into April and we're still planning. We're discussing OKRs and estimates and proposals and initiatives. And uh, yeah, it was still very, very much in, in progress because we wanted to build a great plan. We wanted to have a great, great plan and, you know, and, you know to be to it and to be able to present that this is really going to move the needle. It's the best thing that the teams can be working on. It, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but truth be told, uh, most of the later stage proposals, they were actually good enough. They're actually really close to what we what we had uh, the final stage. So if we had chosen one of one of the uh, one of the earlier proposals, we would probably be just as well just as well okay. And my final point to this is that if you execute fast, you might be able to experiment faster. And this is what is important in a, in a state where the market is changing and you don't really know uh, what the users might uh, might need next or where the where the pain points are are shifting so execute fast and don't overthink it as we did in in march and april it was that was the the big revelation of, of our as well of ours as well we we're extremely relieved when we managed to do it right so we had the plan it was a good plan we were really happy that we had it um and even though this was one of the toughest one of the toughest moments of, of ours of product managers uh, especially in this year, uh, I am I'm really grateful for the opportunity to to having witnessed that to the conclusion that uh, that I presented to you today, and uh, I'm certain that they will help us make better products and solve important problems going going forward. Forward, price really what's important for us it was product vision and the trends of the user feedback at that very moment. Uh, and don't be afraid to break stuff if necessary. Break your product work if necessary. Build it anew just to just to be able to to be uh, to be faster and focus on what matters. And when you think you focused enough, focus a little bit more and discope more stuff. There's always room for more alignment, more focus. It's proven to be critical for us. And execute fast. Be able to experiment fast. One of the critical things uh, that we found as well. What are the things that you've learned? I would really be uh, really happy to, to learn what worked for you uh, when you prioritize on the high level, especially big bets. And uh, this, is, this is essentially all I have to say today to you. So thank you a lot. And uh, back, to, back to the studio. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Martin. Um, it's difficult not to um, love this uh, this message. Um, this uh, message of I'm just gonna yeah um, yeah this message of speed and um, and not overthinking things and experimenting and being daring. So um, that's very exciting. And um, I'm uh, next going 